and welcome to today's show, The State of the State of Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii's live stream uh, network service broadcasting from downtown Honolulu. I'm your show host, I'm Stephanie Stoll Dalton, and I'm broadcasting remotely given our social distancing guidelines during COVID-19 circumstances here in Hawaii. As you know, in this election year, we have an impressive cadre of office seekers and they are racing to replace the current Honolulu City and County Mayor Caldwell, whose term is up. Um, one of those candidates, the latest to join the race is uh, Mufi Huff, excuse me, Mufi Huff Hahnemann. And uh, so we are happy to have Mufi Hahnemann as uh, a guest today on the show. So welcome, Mufi Hahnemann, to Think Tech, and thank you for joining us for this interview conversation. Is it okay if I call you Mufi, or shall I call you Mr. Han former Mayor Hahnemann? Oh, yes, cut to the chase, it's Mufi. <laughs> All right, thanks. Makes it a little it easier since it, 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 it's easy to say that, obviously. There's, there's no one else in Hawaii you're going to meet that's a Mufi. <laughs> that's really, right. Um, um, Mufi Hahnemann is known for his government service as a former two-term mayor in Honolulu uh, from 2005 to, to, to 2010. And he has candidacies for other executive roles, uh, those experiences as well. He brings business, executive business experience as president of the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism uh, Association. And uh, his name recognition that he uh, has now attests to this leadership and experience uh, that he's had, and especially from his mayoral terms. But even a stellar record brings scrutiny. And uh, in the aftermath of COVID-19, how can Honolulu be best governed when budgets and tools needed will be, avail will be unavailable? And now that we have the the, under the COVID-19 pandemic, I wanted to ask you uh, some questions about how you expect the mayor's role will be impacted and what proficiencies uh, do you see the new mayor will need to restore Honolulu's health, safety, uh, as well as economy? Basically, well, yeah, wait. it's a question of why did you decide to enter the race and what do you think you'll need to do? Thank you. Well, I just created a lot more headaches in my life by uh, jumping into this race last Monday. But it's good headaches. It's good head headaches because I'm very concerned. I'm very worried uh, about the economy. I'm very worried about people who are unemployed and they don't know it's when they can come back to work and receive a paycheck. Health benefits may be in jeopardy. Simple, uh, some simple things that have happened, I should say, that uh, are very family oriented, like a graduation ceremony. They weren't able to properly celebrate the way they would have liked to. So with all of these things swirling about, as focused as I am in trying to bring back the tourism industry safely through my present position as the president and CEO of the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association, uh, I and many others who have urged me to run have said, you need to go back. You need to go back for two reasons. Number one, I've been a mayor, not once, twice. I've been tested in critical times, in tough times. Uh, if, if this were um, Anki Dori period, if these were prosperous times, uh, my feeling along I think with many others would be take a chance on someone who hasn't been a mayor. Take a chance on someone who's promising new ideas. Take a chance again on a legislative leader who wants to step up to the executive level. Uh, and maybe we can get through one day, one way or another because they will have time to learn that job uh, as they are the mayor. But in this particular case, we've heard this trite but true phrase, this is no time for on-the-job training. We are experiencing our worst unemployment ever. We're either number two or number three in the country for the worst unemployment rate. So why not have someone who's coming from that industry that is most important in, in terms of restoring jobs? an industry that has $17 billion in revenues, $2 billion in taxes, and employs over 200,000 people. 
if you bring someone with that kind of experience, someone who's actually working as he's campaigning right now, I'm still the president of HLTA, still working very closely with our associates, uh, with government officials, with the community, to make sure that we come back safely, why not send that person back to a job that he's very familiar with? So to cut to the chase, I'm saying, if you send me back to my old job, I'll make it my mission to send you back to yours. Well, I think that that is very promising um, and uh, maybe influential. Um, but what about the fact that, as you've stated, that the, this is an emergency? I mean, we are in an emergency. So uh, maybe business as usual is uh, off the table, right? So I, I, I think you make a good point about on-the-job training, but um, we also have a situation where this isn't business as usual. So what is it that um, you can do with the vast experience, knowledge, and, and know-how that you bring that is different from the ordinary day-to-day um, -day work burden that the mayor mayor's uh, role encompasses. But now it looks like there need to be some other tools. So can you talk a little bit about your thinking on that? Sure, sure. So I'm gonna give you three reasons. Number one is the right kind of experience. I've been in this job, I've been tested. When I was a mayor, uh, towards the end of my first term, I had to deal with the economic recession. Remember that? Tourism was in a slump. The financial industry was on the verge of collapse. Uh, we had major financial problems throughout the country, and it hit right home here in Honolulu. So I had to put together a plan to get us through that. I had to negotiate with the unions so they could understand as a workforce how we were going to come through this together. And then I had to make sure that the budget that I fashioned would maintain basic city services without raising taxes. We did all of that in 2008, 2009, and we came back strong. The other thing that I've been tested in, I'll throw out, is the sewage spill in Waikiki. Uh, as I was campaigning for that job back in 2004, I said, my worst fear is the sewage spill in Waikiki. <laughs> and people said, you're just trying to create uh, headlines. There's nothing wrong with our sewer system. you know." Uh, no mayors had to deal with it, but I knew, having served on the council as a legislator, that we weren't spending enough, to, spending enough time what I call the need to have city services. It was the nice to have. You know, that's uh, planting trees, doing dedications. Things that are beneath the surface are stuff that is chaotic, smelly, stinky. Uh, it shows that there's a rupture in the infrastructure most executives like to kick that down the road. So I came in, the first thing I did was I raised the sewer fees. People said, why are you doing that? I said, we need to prepare. Uh, I know when I was on the council, that was always my main concern. Well, be careful for what you ask for, you just may get it. And that's exactly what happened. My second year in office, 42 nonstop days, uh, 42 days of nonstop rain, tremendous rain and floods. It uh, also was in an area where we were experiencing uh, major construction taking place. Uh, so that was putting stress on the infrastructure. And then of course it burst and then I had to make a decision. Do I try to stop it and have our engineers uh, try to basically find the puka uh, and, and get to that as quickly as we can? Or, or uh, do we dump it someplace else or divert it? Uh, so when I knew, knew of the ramifications of doing that from both counts, one was, well, you could try, you could divert it, but there's no escaping <laughs> the hotel lobbies, the condominiums, the restaurants uh, in, in Waikiki, two square miles there. That's our crown jewel. That's our economic engine. Or the other alternative is that you could dump it in the Alawai. So dump it in the Alawai. I'm, dump, I'm dumping raw sewage in the Alawai. Well, what's the choice, Mr. Mayor? So once again, I had to put on my critical thinking. I said, what would be the best choice here? So I made that decision to put it in the Alawai. Uh, I was immediately criticized by some who said that was the wrong thing to do. I was polluting a canal that was already polluted. Uh, there was even actual, I think someone had jumped into the uh, canal uh, in the aftermath of what had happened and fortunately had passed away. Uh, we were also doing this at a time where the EPA and the Sierra Club was breathing down our neck for things that 
previous administrations had not done. Well, I'm happy to say that I pulled us through. I weathered the storm of the heat that I took uh, for dumping 48 million gallons of raw sewage into the Alawai. Uh, I was able to get the EPA to come to a better understanding of the things they had asked of us and the Sierra Club. Uh, and then I put the city on a regular schedule of maintenance and repair of our aging sewer system and infrastructure. So those are two examples that I've been tested, major, big time. No other candidate, as well as intentioned as they may be, as they talk about their legislative experience, as they talk about their business experience, or they talk about their nonprofit experience, they have not been tested. And right now, I'm being tested in terms of making sure the industry comes back properly, the industry comes back healthy, the industry comes back with the ways that the people want to see it come back, which I totally agree, it's quality tourism, it's responsible tourism, and not the kind of rapid growth that we have seen in the past, proliferated by the fact that vacation rentals have also entered that market big time in terms of hosting people that are coming in. Yeah. So that's number one. Number two, you have to have a plan. You have to have a vision in good times or bad times. I'm the only person running for mayor that has a plan. Why do I have a plan to bring us back? Because I've been doing it in my day-to-day -day job as the president and CEO of the largest private tourism organization in the state called HLTA. And that plan is continuing to be modified as we hear about the different situations uh, that government wants us uh, to answer. We're being proactive about the fact that first organization to have our plan uh, for hygiene and standards actually approved by the Department of Health. Because mm -hmm. I said it to our, my cohorts, it's important that the Department of Health give us a stamp of approval because we're going to be under the gun to make sure that when visitors come here and travelers come here, that they're going to feel safe from the time they leave the airport till they come to the hotel. But most importantly, we want our workers to feel that they're coming to a safe and healthy place so that when they return uh, home, after they're through working, they're not feeling any type of angst or anxiety that they may be taking something with them. Well, Mufi, that's, that is admirable and uh, certainly a, a very uh, strong point to make about the plan. However, we're in um, kind of a new circumstance and one, one portion of that, a very large uh, backdrop for it, is that there's not going to be much budget. I mean, I'm reading that there might be like a billion down, um, at least. And so what I wanted to ask you about was how, what are you thinking about that budget? And anyway, so why don't you, we want to answer that and then I can go on with a few more questions, but um, what do well, you think? You, you've happening? just answered your question, Stephanie. Yeah. You've just answered your question. You need someone who had to balance budgets. You're not talking about a million dollar budget. You're talking about a multi-billion dollar operating budget. And I had to do it uh, at City Hall over the course of six years that I was mayor presiding over these budgets. So that's important to understand. This is no time for on the job training. I can go in there. I've known how to balance a budget before. I know how to do it and keeping in mind what the state funds are gonna be, what the federal grants are gonna be, what well, we can do for public private partnership and what can we do to delay the nice to have projects and get back to essential city services. So I've done that job before. And that's why I'm saying I have that in a plan. I well, have that vision. I'm very encouraged by that. Yeah. Let me finish, Let me finish okay? Yeah. So this is important because there is no time to wait for people to recover. The longer we delay in reopening Hawaii in a safe way, all that's going to do is put extra pressure, not just on hotels, restaurants, small businesses. The credo of the state is this. Open up the small business, open tourism later. I've always said you kind of have to do it in parallel path because local economy will only go so far if people are not working. The way that you augment that is you have to bring in travelers safely, incrementally, to make sure that we can get the revenues as you're suggesting, that's gonna be down to zero uh, and to get it going in some shape or form. And I yeah. have previous yeah. experience to do that. Most importantly, it's all about the execution. I think that's the other part of your question. Everybody's yes. gonna give you fancy campaign phrases, fancy campaign slogans of how they're gonna do it. I've done it in the past. And well, I can, the yeah. crux 
of the matter. Okay, this is the crux of the matter. In fact, you've got two cruxes in there. And the first one is this work with the um, knowing about the arrangements in the state, the fiscal arrangements, okay? All of that complexity that's in place, federal, state, city. Now, the, the, the state isn't gonna have a lot of money either. So what, how are you gonna work and how experienced are you but it's more, more about what are your ideas now for working with the state to keep Honolulu City County funded? And how is that gonna be managed? I think we need to ask you about that. Yes. So I've worked for four US presidents. I serve two Democrats, two Republicans. My relationships in, in Washington are bipartisan. I don't just have Democratic relationships, I have Republican relationships. I will count upon those same relationships that I've done to bring federal funding in the past. So that's number one. Number two, if you remember when I was mayor, uh, Stephanie, you never saw Mayor Mufi, Mayor Billy of the Big Island, Mayor Charmaine of Maui, Mayor Bernard of Kauai ever do anything alone. We were together. We were tied at the hip. And that's exactly the leadership philosophy that I'm going to bring back. People will tell you, we'll work together with the mayors, but they don't know how to do that. And it's based on previous relationships that you've had with them. It's based on things that you have done for and on their behalf. It's uh, based on the fact that they know going down the line that you also have relationships that you can bring to the table. I never governed in a wall centric mentality because I always felt that's important that if I, oh, so goes Honolulu, so goes the state of Hawaii. So that in that regard, I will govern this way. Basically, in working with my fellow mayors, working with the governor, is to make sure that we are all on the same page. There are going to be scarce resources, so maybe this is the time to really dive deep to see how can we consolidate our resources? How can we do away with duplication of services? Because we don't have uh, all those monies to do that. And so that's another way, I believe, in a joint approach, we're going to be able to do that. The other thing I'm going to do uh, is basically look at that budget. There's fat in every budget. And I want to be convinced that the prior administration has cut everything to the bone. I still hear talk about trying to do the Blaisdell renovation. Uh, I still talk about uh, uh, the fact that uh, Waimanalo was a park that should never have been started, uh, that they still have monies there to pay out. So I'm going to look at that budget. I'm going to take away the nice to have and say, we need to do essential city services. We've got to put people back to work. But here's the other uh, advantage I bring to the table. I'm a great believer in public-private partnerships. Yeah. Done that all the time. Uh, when I was mayor, uh, engaging with Castle and Cook, for example, in a public-private partnership to put the infrastructure there in place at Castle, Cook, at Castle and Cook. In return, we had some, city, uh, some land that was deeded to the city uh, for future uses and the like. Uh, I've done that in the private sector, in public-private partnership. What we did was we raised, uh, one year, uh, I asked the state, give me a million dollars, if you can, of uh, matching grants. Uh, and we will match it with the million dollars that we give to homeless organizations uh, through our charity walk. So that was a great example of a public-private partnership where we were able to leverage what we did from the private sector to help with homelessness, and on top of that, the state was able to say, you know what, you folks do a credible job there, let's do it together. And uh, so that, those are just some of the ideas that I have. Public-private partnership, seeking yeah. a bit of, uh, state uh, federal funding, working together with the county mayors and the state to reduce duplication, eliminate services, and then bringing in uh, what I thought was a creative way of doing public-private partnership. That, that deep dot, that is a very uh, confidence building, I think, because that seems to be the, the big uh, um, chiller out there is that where are we going to get the resources? So that's very helpful. Movie. I wanted to ask you if you thought that you would be productive in partnering with the governor, because as you say, I mean, working with the state is going to be critical to this. So as it has gone in the past, how do you see yourself going ahead with uh, whoever is governor and whatever relationships you have. I have a great relationship with Governor Ige. We both started out in Pro City IA area. He supported me in the past in my runs. I have supported him in the past in his runs. Uh, and I, I can work with him. I'm working with him right now. See, that's the other advantage that I have. None of them running for mayor is actually in a situation where they're working with the governor. 
or working with counties to bring back tourism, to bring back this economy, to make people feel safe. I am doing that right now, and I can do it all the way to Election Day in my present capacity as of the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association head. So I have no problem uh, working with, with Governor Ige. I think I have a grasp of what his leadership style is. I think we can complement that uh, by being able to bring what we uh, have uh, on the table, and that is we are the largest county uh, in the state of Hawaii. And I think we can do that in a way uh, that we can help him. Sometimes maybe we're the offensive linemen. We're there doing the blocking for him uh, as he makes uh, yeah. an announcement and, and we're out in front of him. Other times, He'll lead by making the announcement, and then we, we will say to him, Governor, we got your back. Uh, so I think all of these things here lead to the fact that I can also work with the governor. You know, I, I hear people say, you know, this and that, that, and every time you're in the hot seat, you have that those kind of critics, if you will. Uh, I have an appreciation for all the county mayors now, uh, the governor, the Senate president, Speaker of the House, the Lieutenant Governor, because it's a tough job. But I think if you make it easier, if you present uh, to the public, and you don't care who gets the credit. The main thing is we got to move the needle. And therefore, when I come back in, having that current relationship right now, I'll just be able to parlay that into the fact that we will still have a major problem with the economy. Because for those out there that think once we open, 10 million tourists are going to come through the door. That ain't going to happen. It's going to take now time. You're, you're headed right into my next crux, the second crux, which is you're sitting uh, on the tourism issue. Okay, so you, you, your know-how about the tourism industry is, is critical for this comeback and in this partnering with the state because everybody's bound up together in that industry. I mean, that is the industry that's gonna be cru crucial for getting us back. So um, how do you see um, that working, uh, that kind of uh, capacity that you have to your understanding of it and then your capacity to le leverage it or lever it once you're out, out of the business world and back into the government. What, how, how is that all gonna work as you transition back in and then come back out to, to, to use that uh, industry to help us get back? Well, some of my strongest supporters are people in small business, people who are restaurateurs, people who are hoteliers, uh, people who uh, work uh, providing those very essential services on the front lines uh, in an industry where we're so uh, driven by exuding that spirit of aloha. Uh, so the, the hospitality associates across the board, that they, they want me and they're supporting me to go to government because oftentimes government just doesn't get it of what we're going through. Uh, let's take, for example, the hotels that are shuttered. The big ones uh, are losing uh, a million and a half to two million dollars a day while they're shuttered. Uh, the ones that are operating, the smaller hotels, uh, it's costing them a hundred thousand a dollar a day, hundred thousand uh, dollars to operate. So everyone has these mounting cost expenses. Restaurants are also going through the same thing. The airline is going through the same thing. So someone has to bring in that understanding of what I call gear up costs. That just because you've opened uh, we've got, you know, you're not willing to give us a waiver on the property taxes. No county has been able to do that. And we got that big bill standing out there in August that is due property taxes from hotels and resorts and the like. So I bring that understanding and knowledge of what businesses need to do to start opening up and being able to hire people back to work. That's a valuable tool. Very, very so I, I mentioned and yeah. they are anxious to do this, that, and so forth. And if there's some CARES Act funding there, if there's some other federal funding available, I can say to them, okay, first priority was make sure that we buy health and safety equipment. Uh, all those things that we need from the standpoint of keeping us safe and healthy. Maybe we need to shift some of those funds. Maybe we need to work with our congressional delegation that if there's another stimulus package that we put it to, once again, economic recovery or infrastructure, construction work that we can do to kind of keep this economy moving forward. So those are the invaluable uh, experiences that I have. And most importantly, I'm not retired. One thing is that, well, he was in the industry, but he's retired. He doesn't have those relationships anymore. I have those relationships. Yeah. And guess what? In this whole thing going forward, I continue my relationships with current office holders who will be yeah. back in yeah. 2021 after the election. And that's important. 
that is important. And I mentioned the scrutiny um, um, as a result. You have the benefit of the name recognition, but then you have the scrutiny over, over previous uh, history. So um, as, uh, as I know in, from being in DC and you know from being in DC that uh, there are many years to go through of travail with getting a Metro in. And then when you get it in, there are things that happen that I've heard you talk about that I don't know that um, are, are so appreciated at this point because we're still in the jackhammer stage, right? So tell us about how you're thinking you're gonna bring rail home. I've seen, you've had that uh, discussion where you know you started it, you're gonna finish it, okay? So can you tell us a little bit about that in terms of- uh, well, The first thing I gotta put on the table, Stephanie, is that the people voted for rail. They did it in 2008. Uh -huh. We could have said kaput right then and there. There were also some very strong anti-rail candidates that were running. Every time they ran, they lost to a pro-rail candidate. So those are the two things to keep in the context of this whole conversation. Therefore, when I left office, having followed uh, what the people wanted to do, also with the strong backing of the Obama administration, Senator Inouye and others, and the uh, obvious approval of the legislature and the council, because they had to approve that half percent general excise tax. The project was on time, on budget, on schedule, with a billion dollar contingency fund. Now, I've been gone for 10 years. That's when the cost really exploded, nearly doubled. There are people who are running for mayor that should really answer that question, because they were there, either in the council or at heart. Having said that, uh, my feeling is this, uh, it still is a very good idea and we should fix it and finish it because what has been wrong about it, in my humble opinion, it has been poorly managed. Mm -hmm. so now I come back 10 years later, my commitment is this, uh, that I will take the good things that it has done, even during this period, and we see a new Aloha Stadium that's gonna be built that would never have been built were it not for a rail station sitting outside the stadium. The military is investing big time in creating a transit-oriented development station outside of Pearl Harbor. Uh, it will give the airport now another means for tr travelers to move from the airport, return to the airport, and also the workers that work there. And then there's a concept of... of so I'm really, I, I hear what you're saying. I think you've delivered quite a bit of information for those who are scrutinizing this work and its, its uh, gaps in the past and its stops and starts. Um, but um, I think that um, we're, at, we're, we're out of time and are going to have to wrap it up. And um, um, I, I did want to just mention about dissemination and that, you know, the recommendation is to make sure people know about this. And this is an eff effort to make make sure people are seeing, hearing this, this part of it, this side of it. But um, I just want to say I'm Stephanie, da Stephanie Stoll Dalton, and uh, this has been the State of the State of Hawaii uh, on the Think Tech live streaming network. And uh, we've been talking remotely with the candidate for mayor, Muffy Hanneman. And I'll see you again in two weeks on this program, the State of the State of Hawaii. And mahalo for your attention, everybody. And aloha. Thank you.